Hello everyone, welcome to Chargers TV. We are here on location in Queenstown as we come to you from the Queenstown Basketball Stadium. Alongside me is none other than Justin Bryan for our final show of the year. Justin, welcome. Well, it's great to be here, Ronnie. And I mean, great for both of us to be back at our old stomping grounds, the old court. The, uh, I mean, you've seen the transition of the floor. It's now wooden. Yes. Um, <laughs> compared to back in the day when Ronnie played on concrete. But mm. no, it's good to be back. It's, yeah... Makes me feel good as a player and certainly my hoops certainly benefit me as a player, no doubt about that. Oh, certainly. <laughs> we'll, we'll touch a bit more about Queenstown and the stadium here a little bit later on in the show, but let's kick it off with obviously the announcement by Basketball Victoria uh, from a couple of weeks back. They announced an 18 team competition going forward in 2019 that will replace the SEABL competition format. So Basketball Victoria have, have come out with a statement and the statement will be up on your screen there for a look. If not, you can have a look on um, the Chargers Facebook page. There's a link there to Basketball Victoria's might website. Even put, even put the links in the description there for people um, to go and check out. Apps. Absolutely. I'll just read a little bit of their statement here. I won't read the full of it, but it says, and I quote, Basketball Victoria would like to congratulate the foundation licence holders of the Senior Elite League. This is coming from uh, Basketball Victoria CEO Nick Honey. Um, These teams will form an exciting new league that offers extensive playing opportunities to high-calibre athletes for our Victoria, Tasmania and the Basketball Australia Centre of Excellent Scholarship holders. It continues on to say here, for our metropolitan Melbourne and regional Victoria and Tasmania, players can aspire to be a part of this elite competition and we look forward to creating the number number one option for winter basketball in Australia. And it goes on and on. Now, the teams that are in the the competition, um, it's mostly uh, all the Victorian civil teams that got through. Uh, and Albury Wodonga, but we'll go through the list now. As we said, so Albury Wodonga, Ballarat, Bendigo, the COE, Dinong, Diamond Valley, Elfin, Frankston, Geelong, Hobart, Kilsyth, Knox make a return to the elite level. The Melbourne Tigers, the Northwest Fund and Launceston Tornadoes hold a co license. We'll kind of speak briefly about that as well, too. Nutter Wadding, Ringwood, Sandringham, and Waverley. So, out of all that, Justin, what do you make of the new senior league going forward in 2019? I think the dynamic's going to be very interesting. A lot of old rivalries are able to spark back up. Mm. Everyone knows the rivalry between Hobart and Knox will be there. Um, so so that'll be great to see, and they'll be able to continue their other rivalries they had throughout the Siebel uh, over the past couple of seasons. I uh, seeing some new talent there is going to be a bonus as well, um, and a bit more exposure at the other level. So I mean, in a sense, I, I, you know, there is some uncertainty because you've got these new teams coming in. Um, there's a lot of, you know, how do you scout them? They're new. I mean, uh, and not only are they new, but are they old players returning to this sort of level. So it creates a great dynamic, an exciting dynamic. Um, I think the dynamic, uh, which we're going to touch on the sector, Launceston Northwest one, will be interesting. Um, but in general, I think it's good for the sport. I mean, it's certainly good for Tasmanian basketball to see that there is another pathway uh, still available to uh, the highest level of the sport. As President uh, of the Hobart Chargers, Dave Bartlett said, kind of an evolution, really, of basketball going forward and obviously the co-licensee issues with the Northwest Funder and Launceston Tornadoes has created a little bit of media spark within the Northwest Coast and a report in the Advocate uh, yesterday or on Friday uh, while we're down here in Queenstown has kind of put um, the funder in talks with Basketball Victoria next month we believe reading the article which may determine their future going forward. Absolutely and I mean I can understand from a Launceston and a Northwest perspective why they want to have that conversation. It's very hard for essentially two separate franchises to then try and blend together and still come out on top like they did last season. So, I mean, that that's essentially the problem that they're going to be talking about and the logistics of, OK, one's, you know, in Ulverston, Burnley and Devonport, the other team's in Launceston. How are we going to brand these clubs together? Um, so that'll be really interesting. But I, I feel it's going to be a positive conversation. I mean, we've had a, a lot of good talks and heard a lot of good talks uh, are happening with the Tasmanian team. So you can only think positive uh, about the outcome. And most of all, we need it to be positive because the last thing we need is for one of these teams, particularly Launceston to drop out. I mean, they're our other uh, senior women's team in Tasmania. Mm. So you need that pathway for the boys and the girls of the state. Um, if the men drop out, that'd be very disappointing as well because, I mean, a huge basketball contingent, as we know, on the northwest coast. So hopefully both teams can continue to work together. Um, those issues can be worked out uh, through Basketball Victoria um, and a positive result. Absolutely, Justin. And of course, we caught up with Telstra 
Hobart Chargers president Dave Bartlett on Thursday for an interview and um, we kind of discussed the matter further with him in regards to uh, obviously our team here at the Chargers Absolutely. and, and where the whereabouts they're at and obviously they, they, if, you know you can see the full interview on our YouTube page coming up over next week or so but of course David did say that you know they're working out a few things at the moment and, and trying to sort out the, the logistics of it. Absolutely and I mean that's going to be a matter of you know um, depending on how the team's structured. I mean, the big factor being uh, the recent announcement of the uh, South East Melbourne Phoenix um, being a squad. So will players want to have to go over to Melbourne to try and get um, into that development pathway? Um, so, yeah, I think it's a real, really determining what sort of squad we're going to have with the Chargers here in 2019. Um, I mean, I've got full confidence that we're going to be able to bring a very solid team back to the floor to contend for a brand new championship in this new Super League in Victoria. Um, but yeah, logistically as well, it's going to be a matter of are we going to be able to play all our games at the Entertainment Centre? Are we going to be going to Kingston? I mean, are we going to end up back at Creek Road? So who, who knows? And I mean, that's, that's pretty much all we've got to work out at this point. But there's no doubt about it. The Chargers will be back strong and bold in 2019. Uh, of course, Justin. And, and, and speaking to, to David as well too, we asked about the coaching situation. As we know, uh, there's an expected announcement on the women's position in the next few weeks. And he is... Uh, uh, Adam Lippley confirmed on camera and off camera to us that currently Anthony Stewart is the current men's coach of this team. There have been some rumours going around left, right and centre and obviously though, David's come out on front foot and says Anthony Stewart is still coaching this team at the moment. And I think, Anthony, I mean, too, and that's the big positive because Anthony's not only the, um, almost like the face of the club, but I mean, he's the face of the community mm. aspect of it as well. He's the guy the kids see. They see Stewie, he's coaching the team, he's running around with the players, and then before the game, he's running around with them, getting shots up, having fun. I mean, he's a big factor and a big development um, factor as to why the Chargers have succeeded so much in the last couple of years. So with Anthony on board, I think the club's going to remain strong. Um, in saying that, depending on the rumours that we have heard, whatever happens, um, I still think Anthony would have a huge involvement with the mm, club, absolutely. but to have him as a coach is absolutely number one priority. And of course, you know, if we look into our crystal ball now, who would you like to see re-signed for both in, in both teams, men's and women's? All of them. Um, particularly the women's, I thought they were very unlucky last year as I've spoken to you and I've spoken to many people on and off mm. camera. I mean, you have two fit players all season. Um, both of the girls were um, under, you know, for the women's team, both girls were under the age of 20, you know, pretty much high schoolers. Um, and they still managed to be in a position at the end of the season where uh, you had Clara, where you had Britt, where you had Kath, where they had only really played maybe a quarter and a half of basketball together fully fit, and we still managed to push Launceston right to the line there. So, I mean, if we manage to sign all of these players back, I mean, a young gun like Shana Thompson, who really had a breakout season, it'd be good to see her back, the, the Reagan Davies and all that sort, uh, to have them back as well. They were crucial and pivotal uh, when the side was down and out. I mean, a credit to them. So, all the women I'd love to see re sign, and certainly all the men. I mean, who doesn't want to see a championship team back, Ronnie? Guys like Craig Moller over in the NBL getting gigs in the Australian yes. squad. Mm. Math Yang's working out. Many people will be following his social media. Absolutely. Uh, he's working hard. Zach White uh, recently played well uh, in the State League. I mean, he's having, he's playing really well. Apparently going home for a bit yes. uh, in the off-season back to the State. So all the best to him. And Trey Nichols. I mean, we've just checked the paper here on the day of the recording. Um, sorry, check Facebook on the day of the mm, recording. recording. Yes. And um, he's just started his season in uh, Abu Dhabi with a win. So he's playing well. Love to see all them back. All the local guys back. All the juniors back. Let's keep it going. Uh, absolutely, Justin. And expect some announcements coming in the next few weeks, as we said. So keep an eye on Facebook and Chargers TV, for that matter of fact, too, for all the goings on here in the off-season movements. Uh, as we go to break... Uh, Justin, you have your own little kind of NBA podcast or you do your, your stuff in <laughs> comparisons and that. And obviously when we quiz David Bartlett um, at, right at the end of our very interview, which we might put up as an exclusive, I don't know. We might put in the ad break, actually. Oh, boy. <laughs> How happy I am fair, for that. Yes. Fair, fair, to say, fair to say you and you and David have a very good battle on who seems to be the current goat at this current point in time in the NBA. Uh, yeah, we do. And I mean, it's all in good spirits as well. I mean, David, David's great with social media. Media. Uh, I mean, he certainly knows how to catch a fish, and I'm certainly one of the sharks out there that likes biting his body. <laughs> so, yeah, no, nah, all in good faith and all in good fun. I mean, I take Michael on a professional level. He takes Kareem uh, from an all-round perspective, which I kind of have to agree with him. If you include high school and college, it's definitely uh, the captain, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. But considering David was wearing Jordans in the interview, oh, I, yes. uh, <laughs> yeah, it really didn't help your case, buddy. It really didn't help your case. All right, well, you'll see a little bit of, you'll see a little bit of that kind of David's little um, comments 
there as we go to break and we'll come back with more here from the Q QBA right after this. Very hard to sack volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> But the level of incompetence shown in basketball <laughs> knowledge by your colleague at Chargers TV sometimes does astound me, I've got to say. Uh, but anyway, I guess, you know, he's learning. He's a young buck. He'll uh, get his head around the game eventually and, uh, you know, no doubt make a contribution. Uh, and welcome back. Now, as of course our interview show is happening at the moment, let's have a look back on some highlights of, of this year, JB. So what was your highlight for the season? I'll tell you what, one of the big highlights was Mad Monday. Not much footage, not much footage of <laughs> no, that. No, not much footage. Um, but there, was a lot of, there was a lot of mischievous happenings going on. I mean, there was a Jamaican bobsled team. Yes. Where's Wally appeared. Um, yes. A few Rastafarians were about. It was a real, yeah. real crazy time. I don't know where the Chargers boys were. They really missed out on that part. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I mean, really, I think the, the biggest highlight for me was the fact that that seed of doubt was planted in the very first game as to whether the men's team could play as a team. Yep. Um, and even, I think, halfway through after the mid-season break they come back and went back to individual basketball and I mean a lot of people in the basketball community said are they for real mm -hmm. or are they just going to be able to get to a point where there's four egos on the floor who takes the shot and it, at no point did it look like that I mean big highlight personally for uh, me Ronnie was being able to commentate that game on the prelim final unfortunately we don't have the footage no, of that we, we, don't, are, no. we are trying to somehow get that back we're but, still trying but yes. I mean that, that was a massive highlight I mean we sell the deck out for three and a half thousand people that crowd was going off in a huge way um, and I mean then following up heading to rest point the following weekend yes. and co-hosting that I mean that was awesome I mean and really to see the women's team for me um, just push through all the um, hurdles they were given. I mean, the injury to Kathleen, the injury to Clara, the injury to Britt. I mean, Josie uh, ended her season reasonably early as well, so there's a lot of experience there yeah. um, that mm. just wasn't on the team. And seeing young players step up, and I mean, Shana was a huge highlight. Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, mm. there were periods there. Obviously, she's only young where, you know, a bit hot and cold here and there, but I mean, to step up, um, in the key moments and score big baskets when she did. I mean, even on the other side of the floor, someone like a Jack Stanwix who hit those two huge shots in the grand final. Oh, absolutely. And was, abso big. And was pivotal mm. uh, to the men's championship team. So, I'd, in, I mean, I couldn't pick one, really. It was just a, a flourish of highlights. I mean, who didn't like watching Zach and Trey try and yeah, throw it down? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, mm. I'd throw it down. Try and throw it down should be used when I talk about Moo. That was, I think even he <laughs> shakes his head on that home, yeah, he does. home game fast break dunk. But, um, <laughs> and someone like Craig to come down and really uh, get the kids going about it um, and just to see his development as a player and where that's taken him um, come the end of the season. I mean, he went from being, you know, a fringe player playing, yes. you know, mm. uh, in the Asia Cup and all that for Australia to now really being one of the 12 boomers, which is uh, unbelievable to see. So it'd be really, really good to see him continue to develop. And yeah, just in general, I think it was a great development year for the club and a championship. I mean, who doesn't like that? Oh, of course, we always love a championship here um, in the Seabull, or formerly known as the Seabull, to take the last one and to take the first one, which we'll touch on in, in a second. Um, um, look, my highlights are very similar to yours. Um, obviously, the, the game up in Launceston earlier this year with the, uh, the, uh, the women's side took on the Tornadoes. That crowd up there at the Elfin Sports Centre was absolutely rocking, and that was uh, a fantastic atmosphere. I think I remember in the show when we recorded that show on the Monday, I said I think that was probably by far near game of the year uh, contender. So that's definitely right up there. Calling it the prelim final with you, that was absolutely fantastic. The watch party. Uh, obviously the championship and, and yeah, seeing our youngsters come through um, that we see, you know, most days of the week at a basketball stadium, it's really great to see our young um, talent coming through both in the men's and women's program. So And being able to expose themselves to that highlight. Yeah, that, and that too, Justin, absolutely fantastic. So some highlights there from, from this year for us here at Chargers TV. Um, the championship banner has been on tour going around to sponsors and lucky enough that you and me have been uh, involved in this uh, and, and assistant team manager Michael Salter as well too. And, Absolutely. Um, Michael almost front and centre. He's been yes, the... Yes, uh, we'll throw up a few photos now on screen. He's <laughs> been the uh, championship banner manager, so to yes. speak. We've, we've been able to come in and help create the shot and sort yes. of talk and yeah, yeah. a bit of PR stuff. And I mean, we'll Absolutely. probably even throw our photo in there, which yeah, we will. could look a bit more flattering, ladies and gentlemen. I yes, will say it was a little last minute. But, oh, no, absolutely wonderful to get around. I mean, 
just to see the uh, joy that come out of the um, the sponsors as well, and they were willing to talk basketball, and more importantly, they wanted to know where the team was going. For yes, 29. absolutely. Yeah, so. uh, it was massive, and um, and again, once again, a big thank you to our sponsors, major and minor. Uh, your support to the club is absolutely uh, great, uh, valuable to us, and great, and we are very grateful for that. Uh, th- just over a few weeks ago, we had um, the 2008 Chargers team have a bit of a 10-year reunion. This was uh, fronted up by Mark Banabic, former uh, point guard for the Chargers. Superstar. Point and guard. a superstar point guard, as we must say. And good to see Banner and a few others. Uh, we were able to get interviews with Banner, uh, Ray Browning, Shay Stearns, and Mark Nash. All those interviews are up on our YouTube page currently. And again, uh, you'll, you'll find that on there. But it was really good to see some of the guys from uh, yesteryear uh, and, uh, as, they, as they got together and reminisce on good times. Absolutely. And I mean, just to not only the good times, but I mean, some of the, um, you know, just the stories about how far behind they were when they started the season and to really have that gut check yes. out of the moment mm. of, look, we've got to put up or shut up. Um, and just really start kicking butt, which they pretty much did. They didn't lose many games from then on. No, they they didn't. No, absolutely not. They were, I think they were one and six to start off the season, and then they came home with Flurry and pretty much won every final on the road, and they won, of course, we had one home final here back in 2008, and they won that one. So to, to win on the road in finals, especially in... Back in those those days in 2008, where the seat was a tough competition. Absolutely. Back then, you know, credit to our, to our 2008 team on that. And um, a big thing too is just to see how the um, some of the local personalities, which we see regularly as well, that a lot of people probably wouldn't look at now, especially mm. some of our younger ones, go, oh wow, geez, they did play seat. Well, they've got yeah. that real high level experience. So I mean, and just to yeah see someone like you know Mark and Stewie, um, the Davies and all that yes. sort of stuff, mm. see them blend in with the old the um, old mob as well that have come over and you know just catch up on life and stuff like that i mean it's a good team bonding thing and that's what banner said he once he once he heard there was interest for it it was all pretty much all stations you know everything was on the goal and yeah it sounded like the boys had a really good afternoon oh, they certainly did and i believe it well kicked on into the night show i'm shocked <laughs> <laughs> and uh no great to see our 2018 getting together for one more time to reminisce on good old times in that championship year of course they won the first inaugural Seabull championship and it seems fitting that it would become full circle in 2018 to win the last Seabull championship uh when we come back we are going to catch up with Brett Schiltz from the Queenstown Junior Basketball Association. Uh, easy still. And the dunk by Stanwicks. Ram a jam. That's impressed everyone that is in his way or he's going straight to the hoop. Gives it to Caseless. Hesitated a little too much. Gives it to Beatty. Who's inside. Oh, gives it to Boucher who drives baseline. Wants the dunk. Gets it. Big jam. And welcome back. Uh, we're now joined by none other than former QBA president. Now he's president of the Queenstown Junior Basketball Association down here in Brett Schultz. Brett, welcome. Uh, welcome back, Ronnie. Uh, yeah, nice to be nice to be back home, and obviously nice to, to bring the show down here. And obviously, me and Joe have got some memories that we'll share later on in in the, in the show. But um, the, what's the current situation here in in the basketball scene down here in Queenstown, mate? Uh, we're juniors. We just moved to a uh, one calendar year, so we fit in along with all BTAS stuff. So we won't start until February 2019. Um, the seniors roster at the moment probably struggling a little bit, um, probably because everyone's just come off other sports. They need to have a bit of a break, but they're not getting that. They're stepping straight into basketball, and uh, we just need to keep working on getting the numbers up and make sure we've got a competition running. Um, at the moment, they're doing that, um, so we have got a competition running. But uh, yeah, it needs to be a bit of work there and structure things up a bit different, I think. And do you get any? You know, do you get that support from BTAS, and I'm, I'm assuming, and also maybe a little bit of support from from the Thunder as well too. I know Queenstown's travelled up to Thunder and um, played a couple um, curtain raiser games. Yeah, we've um, yeah we've got David Munns from Basketball Taz. Um, he does a lot of work here with us and really supportive. Um, and some other areas uh, through BTAS are very supportive. Um, yeah, we've we'd like to structure up probably in the future a, a, another practice game. Maybe if the Seabull still goes in the format it does, or wherever it changes. Um, we did have the Thunder and the Chargers play a practice match here one year, which you know raises the profile of the game, gets some more kids into playing. Um, they get interested then, and uh, we'd like to probably get something going again like that again. 
It'll be really good. Is that something that you'd, you'd like to, to lobby to, to both the funder and the, and the Chargers? Obviously, David Bartlett is president of, of our club here at the Chargers, and is a regular viewer on this show, so he'd be watching. So would you would you kind of you know just lobby to him and say, would you like to, like to see the Chargers come back down for another visit? Yeah, we would do. Um, we had a <coughs> cracker of a game here last time, and, <laughs> you know, I probably should say, but a few fisty cuffs and a few other things, for, you know, normal between the Thunder and the Chargers. But, um, no, it was a real high-profile game. Um, I think most of the time, most of the imports were here and uh, stuff like that, and it was really like a packed stadium here. But, yeah, we'd, we'd really like to get them back here, and uh, we'd be supportive of it as well, both the junior and seniors, I should imagine. Um, uh, you know, funding-wise, and 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 uh, you know, it does cost some money to get here and stuff like that. But we'd be supportive and grab some sponsors and stuff like that and help out in that that way. And um, yeah, we'd love to have a game here. Um, one, last one be, before I hand you over to JV for I, I think we're going down back memory lane with with, with JV. Um, obviously, you played a number of career, a number of seasons with Penguin up on the northwest coast, and yeah. um, we were involved in a few premierships there. They've just come off winning the the state league, or but also to the under twenty two men and their the senior NWBU men well. won won the NWBU. So uh, you must be kind of happy for your former team um, getting up in all three kind of grades this year. Yeah, I have. I, like when I started Union, I um, I started with Wynyard and then uh, moved over to Somerset with Craig Allen, who was a good mate of mine, and Michael Gaffney. Um, and then I moved on to Penguin because the footy was a bit easier. I was playing footy there as well, so it was a bit easier to, for training-wise. Um, but yeah, I just went up and watched the under-22 um, grand final of the, the women and the men and uh, high-quality games. And uh, Penguin are doing it really well at the moment, even down to the junior levels. It's um, their junior programs and everything. Uh, you know, Zach White, and, uh, who's with the Chargers, and uh, um, Shane Haywood and, and a few of those are putting a really good program together, and Greg's leading from the top. Um, so, yeah, that, they're doing it really well at the moment, and, and it's obviously coming through these juniors right through, so they're getting the results at the end at the senior level at the moment. We uh, said so we're going to touch on throwing back there, but if we look at pretty much every board in the stadium, your name seems to be pretty well covered on it. You've uh, got a fair bit of history among the place. I mean, when did you start... Um, I mean, your junior development down here, and I mean, how did you progress through um, as a junior to where you're at now? I mean, you still play B grade at the moment, so I mean, how how did you go with your development there? Yeah, well, back in back in primary school, I first started, um, and Kevin White and Brian Newitt were the co-organisers of that, and we used to play in the Capitol Theatre Hall. It was a roster run out of there, which is now our local hospital. Um, so we started all there, juniors, and we had, you know, it was basically through the schools, so South Queenstown Primary School, Central Primary, St Joseph's, uh, Gormiston, <laughs> Gormiston Primary School. So we had a, a decent competition. There was probably two, two or three teams out of each school, um, and that was built into a roster, and then you moved on into your high school teams. Uh, the high school had their own teams. Then you moved into the local roster, um, and back in the day, the, you know, the local roster had probably 12 B-grade men's teams and, and probably eight... Uh, A-grade men's teams, plus the same in the women's competition. So, uh, yeah, you sort of started off at the school and progressed through each each division into high school um, and then through to the senior ranks. Some of the players you would have played against and with, um, obviously adorning some of these boards, I mean, who are some of the more memorable teammates that you've had over the years playing here that may have even played uh, Coastal? Uh, oh, geez, you've got me thinking now. Um, there was a guy by the name of Graham Clements who was a really, really good player. Um, uh, Annie Mee growing up as a kid, there was uh, Rocky Hales, Kevin Hales that, um, was a really good player here. Then you had the likes of uh, Trevor Strang, um, Kevin White, um, then later years you know you had um, Harold Hardy, Gary, um, was a bit of a legend here. Um, and then a few others um, that don't sort of come to mind at the moment. But there was uh, Craig Allen then come across from Rosebury. Um, we had Michael Rowlands played here, who's a former Wynyard player. Um, and then later years, you know, we had a few other other blokes like just recently uh, Michael Stitz, I think his name is, uh, plays with Smith. Uh, Mitchell Stitz. Mitchell Stitz that plays in the NWBU. Uh, and a few others that, that have come down and played in the union as well. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been a long, long, long haul um, over the years, but I've enjoyed it and I just enjoy now putting something back in. But there is a lot of memories over there. Just, you know, some don't come to mind at the moment, but there has been a lot of good players here over the years. We talked briefly off camera. Um, you mentioned you actually played a final here and then went over Rosebury uh, back when Anthony Stewart was playing over in Rosebury. Yeah, we did. We uh, 
we had a competition going over there and there was Mark Radford and Anthony Stewart and a few of those guys used to drive down from the coast and Rosemary had a, a very good competition. Um, so, and we used to have a, uh, an inter-town competition here between Queenstown, and Rosemary and Zoon in the years and some of us used to cross over and play in each association and yeah, we had a, I think it was a semi-final here one night and the grand final was in Rosemary the same night and uh, we had, um, we sort of travelled over there in about 31 minutes to <laughs> Rosemary so, <laughs> so we got there in good time but um, yeah, and walked in with about a minute to spare to, to walk onto the court for a grand final. So, yeah, but good days. I and mean, there were some very, very good players over there as well. Yeah, um, you know, Craig Allen and all them guys were from there as well. And, uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been sad to see it go, but that's the way it is today with the working conditions, the way the mines are. Um, seven on seven off rosters and 12 hour days. Um, it's all just declined a little bit. And we, the main important thing that we keep it going for the kids, even if we have a, you know, a social roster, um, get some clinics, keep the profile of the game going because then it transfers. We might, you know, one day pop up and see a kid playing for the Hobart Chargers. You never know. Uh, just quickly, Brett, you did mention, I mean, what's your aim? I mean, you're pretty much, I'd say pretty much the head of the development of the juniors, like across Queenstown, across the West Coast. I mean, what's your goal now for the juniors uh, moving forward? Uh, well, it's to stabilise the numbers uh, because if you've got the numbers, then you've got a competition um, and then you can pick your talent pool from that. But the next stage for us um, is to get the more development stuff here. Um, so, you know, um, you know, when you're running, like I said, when you're running your offences and your defence and things like this, the kids then when they go away uh, for college or further education, they want to play basketball. They don't get intimidated what the other the places are doing, like in Hobart and Burnie and these places. Um, but, and the next step would be to get them all into that kind of stuff um, so they know a little bit more about the game as structurally. Not so much their skills because we learn them the skills in the juniors and the basic you know game plans and stuff. But um, yeah, get into that next next level stuff so they're ready to go if they want to play when they head away. Because as most kids, they move on for further education. So we just hope when they do that that they stay in the sport. And, and like I said, hopefully we pick up the the paper one day or read the news and we've got one of our kids uh, representing our town. So might even be your young boy. Oh, I don't know. He needs to grow. He needs, he needs to grow. <laughs> hey, might need, might need a boat. Muggsy Bogues on the uh, on the Hobart Chargers, Ronnie. Could well, could well be, JB. Uh, who, who knows? But anyway, um, Brett, great to have you on our show here, our final show for the year, um, and and great uh, for uh, and thanks for allowing us to come down to the stadium here, where we, where me and JB used to run around on these courts many, many years ago. Uh, but thanks for your time, and I uh, really hope that um, things do pick up over over the coming years here on the West Coast. Yeah. Yeah, thanks very much. Thanks for uh, enjoy your time back home. Will do. Will do. Uh, Brett Schultz there joining us here on the show. We'll take a break and we're going to wrap it all up right after this. <laughs> And welcome back. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media content to keep up to date with all the goings on here at the Telstra Hobart Chargers. Now, you can like us on Facebook, you can follow us on Twitter, you can follow us on Instagram, or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. So don't forget to keep up to date with all the goings on here at the Telstra Hobart Chargers. Now, JB, we are back in our hometown of Queenstown. We are both Queenstown natives. Of course, we now live in Hobart, of course, respectively. Down in the big smoke, as down, they say. <laughs> down in the big smoke. But isn't it great to be back home? I mean, the journey, you know, we'll probably throw a bit of footage now coming in, the footage that we took coming into Queenstown and a little bit of the town itself and here at the stadium as well too. Uh, yeah, it brings back some good memories. Absolutely. I mean, the drive in, I mean, it's the, the typical drive in. You go over mm. Bradshaw's Bridge. Yes. Um, probably the smoothest part of that entire drive, actually. It yes, really I think strange. so. <laughs> uh, I mean, you wind through Gormie, you wind down um, the 99 oh, Bends beans. there. Yes. Uh, and you come into town, pretty much sprawls open. Just a small little um, shopping area, pretty much just two blocks. That's about it. Yep. Um, that's where you run and scene to everyone. But I mean, to come down to the stadium, I mean, as you mentioned, Ronnie, mm. this is where we started our juniors. Uh, this is where we played some of our, a lot of our, probably our senior basketball as well. Um, I know my last proper game was down here two and a bit years ago. I was vice yep. president of the association at one point. So, and I mean, Brett, I mean, as we talked to him, he's a stalwart yes. um, oh, of the association. Mm. You'll see on the B-roll footage, most of the boards here may as well just be the Brett Schultz board featuring the Queenstown Basketball Association. Um, and that's not a dig at him by no means. I mean, no. he, he's, can't, I couldn't name a grand final day Brett hasn't been involved in um, probably for most of his Queenstown basketball life. I mean, if it's not coaching um, if it's not playing, it's coaching. If it's not coaching, it's playing. Um, I pretty much got a medal for every season. I remember, I think it was a couple of years back. Um, mm. It was the, I think it was 2012 or 2013. It was yep. the first time in 
uh, almost 30 years that Brett hadn't played in the A-grade men's grand final. Well, there you go. Um, so just a, a quality player. But, I mean, as far as, yeah, my memories on it, not so, not as good. I mean, I remember playing defence just a little over here, <laughs> Ronnie. And, uh, yeah, the Kievan noodles I'd had a little bit earlier decided to come and visit me. So off we raced on the court, playing four on five. Wasn't good for the team. Mm. I mean, having battles with Brett as well um, in the B-grade. I mean, not many people would realise just how old, like, Brett's a fair, fair bit older now. Yeah. He's not a younger man. No, no. Um, and, mm. yeah, just, you know, hanging out with mates I mean you can come in here you know pretty much any time during the week get some shots up um, you do have to pay the light bill which I think yes. you'll probably run out on a very soon it night, could, but, it could well do. <laughs> but no, good, good memories to come back down here and I mean we were down for the wedding last night of our yes, friends Rachel we were. and Josh yes. um, wonderful work on the MC there oh, thank you very much um, and I mean that you know just another thing too that that was almost like a whole town get together everyone yeah. knows everyone strong community uh, bond and whatnot. so that was really good and just quickly you haven't mentioned it so I will oh, right, congratulations eh? on your Anthony Stewart uh, oh, basketball here we go. the basketball personality <laughs> of the year for 2019 Ronnie thank you very much much. Uh, you work very hard. A lot of people don't realise Ronnie's the one that puts this show together. All the interviews you see, done by Ronnie, put together himself. All the basketball Tasmania footage, a lot of that that's in the south of the state, that's Ronnie. A lot of effort and time put in. Not many people realise how much work this man does. So, yeah, just congratulations on that, Ronnie. Uh, thank worked, you very much. very hard and well deserved. Uh, thank you. No, well, very much appreciated by you, JB. Um, and, and look, yeah, the the hours we put into this show is is unbelievable, uh, and it's all volunteer work, believe it or not. We we don't get paid. We don't get paid, but we do it for the love of the game, and that's what we and that's what we do. We're devoted to to what we cover here at the Hobart Chargers and also basketball in general. Um, just very quickly going back to memories here for me. Uh, this is where I scored probably the most points I've ever scored in a game, which was 30. Jeez. That was on the old cement floor, On JB. the old concrete floor. Uh, oh, that must have hurt the knees <laughs> after the game. <laughs> my only playing premiership, I won here as well too with Murray back in my first year B grade, and we had a very strong team that year as well too. That was back in, I think, 2000, 2001 yep. season, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and then, and then, yeah, just um, uh, and then coming back here and getting to referee uh, on, on my home court as well too. That was one of the things when I used to referee at Siebel level and, and those Type of things to you know, love to come back here and ref a game at least. And I think have we've done got one that a of your old Siebel ref shirts actually in the office running. Yes, I, I have donated one of my Siebel referee shirts here. Um, I would love to see. I would love to see get framed somehow. Yeah, if that's yeah there's, a, there's a lot of things. That, I mean, I mean, and that's the thing with yeah. the stadium too. When you come into the, it's it's an old school gym. Yeah, it it's is straight up. It's got a couple of wooden benches. Uh, the second, we've got a second level there. Not exactly sure what the second level was ever meant for, but no. I mean, grand final days. It was not. I mean, oh, it's been, especially ten years ago. Yeah. You, three yeah. 400 people in here all crowded mm. round um, always a great atmosphere I mean it's died off a little bit but grand final yeah. day and um, still manages to bring some people and even the um, association with Penguin and Somerset that yes. Queenstown's developed in the last couple of years and a shout out to the um, to guys like Shane Haywood, yeah. um, Brett Schiltz, Aaron yeah. Bird and Craig Young, all those guys that have helped negotiate uh, those games. I mean, they bring clinics down. And I mean, that's another thing for kids too down here. Rather yes. than just aspiring to play in the senior comp here, they can see the junior development and go, wow, if I can go up to the NWBU, you know, yeah. who knows what can happen. So, I mean, Zach White plays in the NWBU. I mean, why can't our kids? Correct, absolutely, and development is going to be big here over the next few years. And I know Brett has Brett did touch on that in his interview as well, as well too. So uh, Queenstown's a lovely place. So if you can get down here, by all means, come down, get on the, get on the Upper Railway. We have the train running through all the way through to Strawn. We have some other beautiful uh, bits and pieces the here. Four as by well four too. by four tours, the yes. Lost Mine tours. Um, I mean, yeah, we joke about it and mm. whatnot, but the Empire Hotel is a yeah. lovely hotel. It's it an is. Old, it's an mm. old school pub. Um, I mean, the staircase in its heritage listed. Oh, my word, um, yes. And the mm. dining room's pretty much the original dining room it's always had. So if you want that rustic feel but still get a good pub meal, great place to go. I mean, we were at the Silver Hills last night. Yes, for the we reception. were. Yes. Um, so, I mean, and that's another great place to go. Great views and stuff. I mean, it's it's a real sightseeing sort of place. Oh, absolutely. And the West Coast in, in general as well, too. So if you, are, if you are wanting to come down here, please come on visit. You will uh, not forget a, a, a more memorable will visit here, Queenstown and on the West Coast. That's all we have time for in this edition of Chargers TV and for the year, JB. It is, we're finally done. It is done. Merry we, can go holiday, we can go on holidays. Somewhat Merry Christmas and Happy yes. New Year in the middle of November. End of November, actually. It is <laughs> yes. the end of November, isn't it? Oh, yeah, about near the end of November. Near the end of November, yeah. yes. So, you know, it's been good. It'll be a nice little break. I mean, no doubt everyone stay tuned to Chargers TV. Oh, absolutely. I mean, as you mentioned, the player updates, yes. coaching updates. updates. And, 
and everything basketball related will pretty much get uh, up onto the t onto the Chargers TV network. Um, and yeah, I mean, thanks to everyone who's supported us. Thanks to everyone who's had input on the show, from player interviews to coaching interviews, mm. um, and to yeah. Pretty much everyone who shared our content and, and made it available for the masses. And of course, I shouldn't forget too. Just before we before we go, the charges to AGM on December the sixth as well too at Rain Basketball Stadium. You will find a link on our Facebook page where you can register the boat if you're not a registered member already. So get on our Facebook page, find that link. Get yourself registered to boat, then come to the AGM on December the 6th and have your say in what is going to be a huge year going forward here for the Telstra Hobart Chargers. On behalf of Justin Bryan, I'm Ron Riggs. This has been another edition of Chargers TV and we'll see you next year.